Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 11, we're going to start the first of actually like four lectures, honestly, about the topic of systems of linear equations. Uh, lectures 11 and 12 will focus on the systems of linear equations. Lecture 11 will, will mostly focus on two by two linear systems. Uh, while lecture 12 will focus on three by three linear systems. Uh, and then the next two le lectures after that, uh, we're gonna focus on uh, using matrices to help us with the systems of linear equations. So I keep on saying this word, systems of linear equations. What are we talking about here? So a system of equations, uh, without the necessarily adjective of linear here. A system of equations is a set of equations with common variables. So you can ex see example of such a thing right here. Like this right here is a two by two uh, system of linear of uh, system of equations. It's a linear equation, li linear system. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, it has two equations. We got this one right here, two x minus y equals five. We have a second one here, x plus four y equals seven. We have two equations, and of course we have these two variables, x and y. All right, and so you often describe a system, in this case, two by two, to suggest there's two equations and two variables. You always mention the number of equations first and then the number of variables second. So if one was describing an M by N system, uh, this would suggest that you're gonna have M many equations and you'd have N many variables in that system. Now, we're not going to do anything there that's that's huge, but in theory, that, that's, that's what this terminology is meaning here. So a system of equations is a set of equations with common variables here. Um, a solution to a system of equations is any assignment, uh, it's an assignment to each of the variables such that each of the equations is satisfied here. So if we were to take like an, a single equation, like an equation with one variable, take something like 2x plus 1, equals zero. Uh, the solution to this equation is negative one half. Because notice if you plug in negative one half for x, you're going to get two times negative one half plus one. Uh, working with the left hand side, simplifying it, you're going to get there a negative one plus one. That does turn out to be zero, which is the right hand side. The assignment that x equals negative one half, that gives us a solution to the to the equation. This is that's what it means there. The assignment makes the left hand side equal to the right hand side. Now, in a system of equations, an, a solution would be an assignment of each of the variables because there might be more than one variable here. Using this example right here, we would need an assignment for x and for y. And that assignment needs to make the first equation true. It needs to make the second equation true. If there was a third equation, it needs to satisfy that one and the fourth one and the fifth one and all of them. So a solution to a system of equations is going to be an assignment of all the variables which satisfies all of the equations in the situation. Now we're going to be focused on systems of linear equations. So we say uh, so it's a system of linear equations if every equation in the system is linear. That is with regard to the variable, um, the exponent is always 1. Um, so you don't see anything because we don't write exponents of one here, but the variable is always one and you never have products of these things together. So this should be linear equations with multiple multiple variables, mind you, but it's going to be a system of linear equations. Uh, sometimes we call it a linear system for short. Uh, conversely, the system is nonlinear if there does exist a nonlinear equation inside the system. We'll explore nonlinear systems much later in this semester, um, I should say in this lecture series, but for now we're going to talk about linear systems. They're a lot more tame compared to what we can see for nonlinear systems. So. Let's, let's discuss what does a solution to a linear system look like. So we keep on looking at this example right here. What I'm first going to do is take an, or take, a, take an assignment that's not a solution. Like if I were to test the value, uh, say 1 comma 0, notice that if you put 1 comma 0 into the first equation, and we're going to follow the usual convention that if we call our variables x and y, then if I write a point, an ordered pair, the first coordinate is the x coordinate, the second coordinate is the y coordinate. Uh, so if I plug in x equals 1 and y equals 0, that's what this means here, x equals 1 and y equals 0. If you plug that into the equation, the left-hand side, you're going to get 2 times 1 minus 0 is equal to 2, which is not equal to 5. That does not satisfy the right-hand side. 
like so. Um, it, it, well, sorry, the right hand side is equal to five. I should I should clarify that the right hand side, which is five, is not equal to two. It didn't satisfy the first equation. In fact, if you check the second equation as well, you're going to get one plus four times zero, um, which is going to equal just one. That's not seven. So again, that is violated as well. This is not a solution to the system because it didn't satisfy uh, the equations. In fact, it didn't satisfy any of the equations. Now, on the other hand, if we did something like the following, let's test the point. This time, I'm going to take 0, comma, negative 5. Notice what happens here, that if I plug in x is 0 and y is negative 5, and if I plug that into the first equation, I'm going to get that the left-hand side becomes 2 times 0 minus negative 5. Well, that would simplify just to be 5. That is the right-hand side. So that actually certifies the first equation. But if we look at the second equation there, if you take 0 plus 4 times negative 5, that's going to give you negative 20. Negative 20 is not equal to 7. So it turns out eh, it didn't work on the second equation. This is what's important about a solution to a system of equations, that each equation must be satisfied by that assignment to count as a solution. So now let's get to the point that was suggested here on the screen, 3 comma 1. What's so special about that? Well, it turns out this is, in fact, a solution to this system of equations. If we were to plug in x equals 3 and y equals 1 into the first equation, we get the following. The left-hand side would become 2 times 3 minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is, in fact, 5. That is the right-hand side. So the first equation is satisfied. How about the second equation? If I take the left-hand side there, there's an x plus 4y. I replace the x with a 3. I replace the y with a 1. So we're going to get 3 plus 4 times 1. 4 times 1, of course, is 4. 3 plus 4 is, of course, equal to 7. That is the right-hand side. And so Bob's your uncle. 3 comma 1 satisfies the first equation, and it satisfies the second equation. Those are the only two equations involved in this linear system, and therefore it is, in fact, a solution. Um, so we, we have now demonstrated that this uh, linear system has a solution, and in fact, it's the only solution to this linear system. How do I know that? Well, there is a very nice geometric argument you can make about this, because after all, our linear system, which I note is no longer on the screen, so let me rewrite it. We had, we had the equations 2x minus y, equals 5. That was the first one. And we had the second equation, x plus 4y is equal to 7. These, this is a linear equation, both of them, with two variables here. If I solve for y um, into the first equation here, you can move the 2x to the other side. So you get negative y equals 5 minus 2x times both sides by negative 1. You're going to end up with this equation right here. You're going to get y equals 2x minus 5. This is now the slope-intercept form of that equation, uh, for which this is a, uh, as, a as a line, it has a y-intercept of negative 5. So while the scale on my x and y-axis aren't included here, we can assume negative 5 would be down here somewhere. Um, it has a slope of positive 2, so we're going to go up 2 every time we go up 1. And so um, while this is drawn to scale, I didn't label the scale, you get a line that looks something like that. That's y equals 2x minus 5. Now, if you take the second equation right here, x plus 4y equals 7, the same thing, move the x to the other side, you get 4y equals 7 minus x. Divide both sides by 4, we end up with this equation right here, y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 7 fourths. 7 fourths is a teeny bit smaller than 8 fourths, which of course is 2, so you'd expect a y-intercept somewhere around here. Our slope this time is negative 1 fourth, so every time we go down 1, we're going to go over by 4. And so you get a graph of a line that looks something like the following. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm approaching this problem geometrically. I can graph the solution set of this equation. That's its line. That's the, the graph is the line. I can graph this equation. The graph is the solution set to the equation. So a solution to a system of equations is the simultaneous solutions of all of the equations. So if the first graph 
is just an illustration of its solution set. And the second graph is just an illustration of the solution set of the second equation. This actually suggests that the intersection of the graphs will then be the simultaneous solutions to these two equations, thus the solution to the linear system. And when we graph these two lines, we can see very clearly that there is only one point of intersection. These lines only hit at one point. And that one point of intersection has got to be 3 comma 1. Uh, because we've already determined 3, 1 is a solution, and geometrically there can only be one solution, so that's got to be the unique solution. Um, this happens actually a lot when you work with linear systems. Uh, we get this unique solution. Now, if we want to think about this geometrically, it turns out there are other options as well. Um, one possibility is that when you graph your lines, you get, you get a line like this one, um, but you might also get a line that's parallel to it, um, in so much that they actually never intersect whatsoever, because uh, parallel lines by nature are going to be equidistant. Uh, they never touch, they never intersect. So it's possible that there is no solution to a linear system, be, at least for this when you have two equations, two unknowns, because maybe they, they, they're, there's no solution because they're parallel, right? So we can get zero solutions, we can get one solution. Uh, third and final possibility is you actually can get infinitely many solutions. It turns out that when you graph the first line, you get something like this, but then when you graph the second line, you get the exact same thing again. Um, it could be that the two lines completely overlay each other. They overlap, as is illustrated with this uh, dashed line. You see the yellow line and the blue line are, are overlapping, and so you actually get every solution to the first line is a solution to the second line, and as each line contains infinitely many points, you can get infinitely many possibilities. Now, it turns out that for a 2x2 two two linear system, these are the only three options. You either have no solutions, a unique solution, or infinitely many solutions. As we explore linear systems in the future, um, we start looking at higher dimensions. Like, what if we start looking at 3x3 three three linear systems? We'll do that in the next lecture. We'll see that the same pattern holds, that a linear system has only no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions.